All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm coming with my first Washington football team mock draft of 2021. Y'all know I love draft season. I love everything, scouting, even recruiting. I'm a big UGA fan, so I watch guys in high school and see who may go to Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, LSU, Florida, all of these other teams. So I watch guys go from high school to college to NFL. So just scouting NFL talent and projecting how good they'll be at their next level is the most fun part of football for me. So this is not because we're two and three. I'm definitely not one of those guys that's hitting the panic button on the season. Now, granted, if we keep playing how we've been playing these past five weeks, especially how we beat ourselves against the Saints, we're not going to be anybody on the rest of our schedule. But I just believe we will not be that bad. Granted, it's been five weeks of making the same mistakes in different ways, but I still believe that we'll get it together. And it doesn't matter. I mean, even if we were 5-0 and at this point, no team is perfect. So I would be analyzing our weaknesses and looking at who we should be getting in the draft anyway. Again, the draft part of the season, the draft part of the year is my favorite part of football. Of course, I love Sundays. Live and die by Sundays and Saturdays as well. And even Fridays for high school. But scouting and draft analysis prospect projections that's where i have the most fun i know i'm repeating myself but i just wanted to get it through to people that this is not the oh we need to do a mock draft right now because we are so bad type of thing again i'm one of the more optimistic people about the outlook of the rest of our season but i still feel like it's time to get some mock drafts out there mostly because i want to put people on to some prospects and the reason i don't want to wait until the end of the season is because you won't be able to see these guys live so with these guys that i have us mock to getting of course it's very early some of these rounds may end up looking impossible by the end of the season i'm trying to be as realistic as possible with guys that i'm projecting to us like i'm not gonna put nicobe dean in the sixth or seventh round he's going in the second round at the lowest so i'm trying to be realistic for where we are right now in the season as far as these college players go and how teams feel about them but by the end of this season this whole mock draft is gonna look crazy but like I was saying, the main point of this mock draft is to give y'all guys to look at throughout the season. So some of these guys that I put y'all on to, you may have never heard of, and now you'll get a chance to watch them live throughout the rest of this college season because we still have a lot of college football left to play, and you'll get a chance to watch these guys live to see if we really should go and get them. Same for me. Going through this mock draft, me doing even more research literally for this mock draft video, I was able to find some prospects that I didn't know about yet either. And so now I'm excited to watch some of these guys play on Saturdays along with my Georgia Bulldogs because I want to see them live and see if they're worthy of going to our Washington football team if they would be a good pick for us so again the main point of this video is to put y'all on to some prospects that you may want to keep an eye on leading up to the draft but also at the same time I just love draft stuff I love talking draft I love talking college football so I had to get this done and before we dive into the mock draft make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you check out the rest of the channel all of my videos the organizing playlist I even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos make sure you check out the rest of the channel live streams every game post game live stream after the game where y'all call in and y'all let y'all emotion out cuss out the players whatever you want to do again i appreciate y'all let's go ahead and get to the video let's get it all right so just to warn you we only have six picks right now we traded away our fifth round pick so we have a first, a second, a fourth, a sixth, and a seventh this year. I'm pretty sure that's going to change. We're going to end up possibly trying to accumulate more late round picks if we can. Maybe even some mid or early round picks. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe we trade up for quarterback. A lot's going to change from us being two and three to what we're going to end up being by the season. Either we're going to get better or we're going to get worse. But with how difficult our schedule is, I honestly just don't see us going like eight and nine or nine and eight. I think we're either about to be good enough to beat a lot of these good teams or we're about to be bad enough to lose to a lot of these lesser teams. I think we're either going to win the division 
or have a top eight pick i'm not gonna lie because again with how difficult all of these opponents are if you can beat one of them you can beat the rest of them if you can't beat one of them who can you beat type of thing so i just don't really see much of a middle for us to be completely honest and with every pick i'm gonna give you all their ceiling some of their weaknesses and strengths and then i'm also gonna tell you the state of the washington football team and why we should take this play but let's go ahead and dive into the mock draft now y'all know i have every reason to be completely biased about my round one pick 11 pick quarterback malik willis he went to westlake high school same high school I went to, Cam Newton, Adam Pacman Jones, even AJ Terrell for the Falcons, and a lot of other NFL players. It was like a three-year streak where Westlake High School had the most players in the NFL than any other high school in the country. And then here just comes another polarizing figure. So again, just for that reason alone, from him going to Westlake, being from Southwest Atlanta, acting like he's from Southwest Atlanta and all of that, it gives me every reason to be biased. But at the same time, all bias aside, I definitely feel like he could be our franchise quarterback of the future. To me, his ceiling is basically a three inch taller and over 20 pounds heavier Kyler Murray. I mean, he does things that other quarterbacks just could never dream of doing. You cannot teach the talent that he has, the speed, the strength, because he's not as fast as Lamar Jackson, but he's probably the tier below that, but he's definitely stronger, can take more hits, and can actually run guys over if he needs to, kind of like a Trey Lance as far as how he's built. Not quite like a Cam Newton, because Cam Newton's just a generational type of build. Like Cam Newton easily could have just been a dominant tight end as well. So Malik Willis isn't that strong, but he's around like a Trey Lance, where if he needs to lower his shoulder and run somebody over, he can. You don't want your quarterback doing that, but that's also some added to his arsenal of skills and traits and also comparing him to a Lamar Jackson he has far more throwing potential like if we're just talking about arm talent arm strength touch ball placement the ability to zip it if you need to or to throw a teardrop if you need to a rainbow type of pass Malik Willis has far more potential to do that than Lamar Jackson probably ever will so even though people look at Malik Willis like this super scrambler another Lamar Jackson he actually has a lot of pocket passer potential and y'all know me man this whole offseason you can go back and check the receipts all of my live streams and videos i've been praising malik willis and matt corral over spencer rattler over sam howe since before this college season even started and i'm glad other people are waking up but malik willis looks even better than i thought he would look this past offseason when I already liked him because now he's worked on his footwork so he's throwing from a consistent base his mechanics are just more consistent he's starting to be able to read defenses a little bit better there's still a lot of progress there and I wouldn't be surprised if he had to sit for a while make like maybe an entire year Pat Mahomes sat for an entire year well technically he played the last game of the season but that's because the Chiefs already secured their playoff spot but either way I wouldn't be surprised if Malik Willis is still relatively raw by the time he hits the NFL and he's to sit for like a year I'm I'm cool with that and now to look at the state of the washington football team and why we should take malik willis with our 11th overall pick in the draft round one well to me taylor heineke is a great backup to have and he's a good starter until malik is ready like i said malik probably will have to sit like a year even though just like how justin fields got thrown out there earlier than people expected and he's starting to get better i wouldn't be surprised if malik willis somehow gets thrown out there earlier than he was supposed to it ends up balling out but to be safe i could definitely see malik willis sitting behind taylor heineke for a year and again i like taylor heineke a lot but i just don't see him as that franchise quarterback you give him a big four-year deal and expect him to carry us to the super bowl granted a lot of the reasons why we're losing are outside of taylor heineke's hands so i'm definitely not blaming taylor heineke for why we're two and three right now even though there are a lot of things to nitpick with him like i've already done i did a whole game review of that saints game and broke down exactly why taylor heineke isn't exactly a franchise quarterback but i'm still relatively high on him and i would be fine with him starting for us next year as well but it's time to go get that franchise guy that can be a justin herbert your josh allen your pat mahomes is that's just so good he makes up for all of the whole you have on your team the Chargers aren't a perfect team the Bills aren't a perfect team top to bottom either but those guys are just so elite making off schedule plays when there's good coverage throwing it in a spot where only the receiver can get it just big time throws off schedule plays all of that type of stuff you see Kyler Murray doing it and that's the one reason the Browns aren't like unanimously the best team in the NFL because top to bottom you can argue they have the best roster but Baker Mayfield is good but he's not Kyler Murray Josh Allen Pat Mahomes, Justin Herbert. I believe Malik Willis can be to the level of those guys, and that would take our team to the next level 
And even while we're trying to construct this roster to make it better, especially in the secondary, the linebacker group and things like that, you would have a guy that can carry a team and make them better than they actually are. And again, I compare him to basically just a taller and heavier Kyler Murray. You know, Kyler Murray, they draw up plays to get him outside of the pocket often and on purpose because he's so small and he just can't see behind those 6'5 offensive linemen. Well, Malik Willis isn't Josh Allen built, but he's three inches taller than Kyler Murray and heavier so he can take more hits if need be but he has better pocket passing potential than a Kyler Murray just simply because he's tall enough to see over offensive linemen and again also he's shown this year way more than he did last year that he could actually throw from the pocket he has better footwork he climbs the pocket he's not looking to run immediately a lot of scrambling quarterbacks have this huge negative where they have this ability to just run and they run and actually take off past the line of scrimmage when they should have been just using their legs to look down the field to make a throw Malik Willis as well as he can run again probably just a tier below Lamar Jackson but he's easily going to be top four most electric running quarterbacks in the NFL when he hits the NFL he's still looking up and trying to deliver a pass and not just using his legs as a bailout all of the time picking up a first down with his legs is not his main priority he still wants to be a full-blown quarterback that can win from the pocket and that's something you can work with for sure now moving on to round two 43rd overall pick I have us taking free safety Daxton Hill. And to me, he's basically just a faster Devin McCourty. But the reason he'll make it this far in the draft is because he's inexperienced. But he's an athletic freak. And he's already had so many flashes last year and this year in college football. And it's just all up to him gaining more experience and him getting his instincts better. But if we're talking about range, he's one of the rangiest free safeties in this entire draft. And he's an athletic freak. He's a good tackler. I mean, he's everything you can want in an ideal free safety prospect, but he may not be ready day one. Or if you throw him out there day one, get ready to live with some of the mistakes he's gonna make. But like, if we're talking about just athleticism and potential, he has one of the highest ceilings in this draft at the safety position. It's probably Kyle Hamilton, big gap, because Kyle Hamilton's like a generational player right now. And then probably next up is Daxton Hill. But again, with his lack of experience, with the mistakes that he typically makes that are pretty much all mental and technique and instincts, I could see him dropping out of the first round because some teams may not feel like dealing with a somewhat project but i'm willing if he makes it to the second round i'm sprinting to the podium to get daxton hill because the potential is definitely there and boy do we need a free safety because now getting to the state of affairs with the washington football team they clearly don't trust jeremy reeves because he still isn't starting right now even with all of the miscommunication issues we're having all of this terrible secondary play we're getting specifically to safeties and even when we brought in bobby mccain we weren't necessarily looking at him as a long-term solution Landon Collins, once his contract is up and we can avoid all of the dick cap, I'm pretty sure he's out of here. And again, going back to Jeremy Reeves, if they truly liked him like that, he'd be playing by now with all of the struggles we've had in the secondary anyway, how much worse can it get? So if Jeremy Reeves still isn't playing right now, DeShazer Everett, they clearly view nobody in the safety group right now as our long-term option. And I could definitely see this being one of our biggest needs heading into the offseason. I mean, it's one of our biggest needs right now. I wish we can get Daxton Hill today. Then round three, 75th overall, wide receiver George Pickens from Georgia, man. If we can somehow get him in the third round, we got to do it. And I think he may make it to the third round, honestly, because of his couple of red flags from his personality. Like, I mean, he, he just gets into trouble, even the off the field, perfect record. But it's something about when he's on the field fighting, using his water bottle and acting like he's peeing on an opponent team's quarterback as he fell out of bounds. I remember seeing that live and I was so disappointed in him. He's just one of those guys that kind of has some character concerns, but at least it's all on the field. That's still not great, but at least his record off the field as far as showing up to practice early, film watch, just being a good guy. I mean, he always gets such great reviews when they interview guys around campus about him and things like that. He's such a great guy off the field it's something on the field that he just turns into a different animal and he just becomes just this super bully and i don't know hopefully he can get it together we'll see this is again why i'm doing this mock draft so early 
because George Pickens hasn't even played a down yet this year. And we're going to talk about his injury history. And that's one of the main reasons why he'll make it to the third round in the draft, I believe. But since I'm making this video so early, when he does play for Georgia, you'll get to watch him for the rest of the season and see how truly talented he is. And also to see if he can keep a clean injury slate for the remainder of the season. And also to watch if he's matured any. But man, the talent is there. I mean, think Allen Robinson, Justin Jefferson. I'm probably leaning more towards a Justin Jefferson. And just imagine this team with Terry on one side and Justin Jefferson on the other. And then you can possibly get this guy outside of the first round. Actually, quite likely. Because again, the character concerns, that's one. But I think the biggest thing is his injury history. I mean, again, he hasn't even played a down yet for Georgia this year. Georgia right now is missing their top three receivers and their starting quarterback, even as much as we're dominating. So I can't wait to get all of these guys back, most notably George Pickens. Because if you talk about with no injury history, it's almost unanimous that people feel like George Pickens should be the first player taken off of this dominant Georgia team this upcoming draft. That's how talented he is. He, again, he's basically Justin Jefferson. He's easily the most talented. If we're just talking about talent, He's the most talented receiver Georgia's had since A.J. Green easily. It's not even really close. But there's the injury history. There's the character concerns. And I think that's why he may make it out of the first round and possibly out of the second round. But again, it depends on how healthy he can stay throughout the rest of the season. If he matures, has a clean slate character-wise and injury-wise to finish this season, he can very likely go into the first round, sadly, because that means we won't get him. But then I'd be happy because that's another Georgia Bulldog going in the first round. I feel like we'll probably have five or six guys, hopefully. But the talent is there. It's undeniable. You could definitely say he's the most talented receiver heading into this draft just Chris Olave Garrett Wilson a lot of those other guys are very talented as well I'm not saying they're not talented but they're far safer George Pickens without injury is the best receiver in this class in my opinion a lot of people feel like that a lot of draft analysts feel like George Pickens should be the best receiver in this class just health and injury concerns but if we can get him he can stay healthy he can stay in line character wise, not do all of those on the field antics. Cause again, you don't really even have to worry about off the field. Just imagine Terry McLaurin and Justin Jefferson with Curtis Samuel speed when he's fully healthy. Oh yeah, I love that. Even though receiver isn't like one of our biggest needs, if Justin Jefferson slides to the third round, you take. Then round four, 113th overall offensive tackle, Daniel Falele. And basically he's just Jordan Mulata, but not as raw, but still raw. Remember Jordan Mulata, was the guy that I was trying to put everybody on. He played rugby, I believe in Australia, and he was just this athletic freak. He was basically the Samus Reyes before Samus Reyes, but he was an offensive tackle while Samus Reyes is a tight end. And I was trying to tell people, I even had him going to us in a mock draft like the sixth round before the Eagles picked him up as an undrafted free agent. He ended up going undrafted, and now look at him. He's their franchise left tackle. Well, Daniel Falele is literally Jordan Mulata, but not as raw. And that's why I feel like even though Jordan Mulata went undrafted, this guy will probably make it to the fourth round at the latest. Because the other way to look at it, Samuel Cosme is one of the most athletic offensive tackles to ever hit the NFL. I believe the second most since the 1980s. Second most athletic tackle literally since 1980 to ever touch the NFL, if we're talking about just pure athletic traits. And Falele isn't that athletic, but he's definitely bigger. Again, like Jordan Mulata, really big, really heavy, but also really strong. Not as athletic as Samuel Cosme. Samuel Cosme went in the second. I feel like that slight lack of athleticism, but the same amount of raw as a Samuel Cosme is why Falele will make it to the fourth round. And then as far as the state of affairs for the Washington football team, Samuel Cosme is already our franchise right tackle. That was a great pick right there. A great find in the second round. As long as he's healthy, he's been really good this season. He's already one of the best run blocking offensive tackles in the NFL not even just out of the rookie class but the entire NFL and he's getting better in the pass protection game as well so we already have our answer at right tackle but then Charles Leno is not our long-term answer at left tackle right now he's just a band-aid and I like Charles Leno I kind of like Cornelius Lucas more well I liked what Cornelius Lucas did at left tackle more last year than what I've seen from Charles Leno at left tackle this year but then again we threw Cornelius Lucas in there in place of Samuel Cosme against the Saints he didn't look too good either way I, I don't think Charles Leno is the long-term mental at left tackle and then Cornelius Lucas will probably just be our backup swing tackle for a while I mean it's hard to say you have a franchise swing tackle but I do think he'll end up being here for a long time so if there's an injury to Samuel Cosme or Falele that's when Cornelius Lucas comes in but I don't think they view him as our long-term starter at all and I could definitely see them trying to go get their franchise left tackle just like the Eagles did go get the Jordan Mulata clone and Daniel Falele just not as raw 
because Daniel Falele is actually playing college football. Jordan Malata literally came from playing rugby to the NFL. Then round six, pick 190. I have linebacker Quay Walker. And the way he's playing this season, if he keeps playing like that, he may honestly be a first or second round pick. But he also has a lot of mental processing issues. He's just one of those guys. He's not hesitant. He's going to guess. If he guesses wrong, he's completely out of the play. And he just looks crazy. But when he guesses right, he looks like the best linebacker in college football. And that's why I feel like he'll make it to round six. Because he's still pretty raw. He's an athletic freak. I mean, crazy athlete. And the reason why I have us getting him is because he's the ideal Sam linebacker for us. And as far as the state of affairs for the Washington football team, again, we definitely need just another linebacker. Mike, Sam, whatever. And I already know this franchise isn't going to give up on Jamin Davis after just one year. Even though he only played, what, like 13 snaps ago against the Saints for some odd reason and I don't even think injury was a part of it I still don't think they're going to give up on their first round pick after one year and I feel like Jamin Davis is best suited for the wheel linebacker spot so let him go out there and make plays in space and cover guys so that's your wheel linebacker Cole Holcomb isn't the ideal Mike linebacker but he makes plays whenever we have two linebackers out there and so if you have three out there that's even less responsibility for him and Cole Holcomb is solid not great but solid and we're still waiting to see what Khalid Hudson will do but at the end of the day he's really just a converted safety to linebacker so probably will linebacker is the only linebacker spot he could potentially ever play even though i think he may end up being good it's just that him and jamin davis are clashing right now as far as a spot on this linebacker group because they're both will linebackers jamin davis may eventually become a mike but as of right now it doesn't look too good for him playing mike even though he already looks better than john bostic but that doesn't mean he's a franchise mike linebacker yet and that's where quay walker comes in he can do all of the dirty work he can rush the passer very well off the edge kind of think much less instinctual and definitely way more raw Michael Parsons. I mean, he can edge rush if you want him to. He can cover running backs and tight ends. And he could just play off ball linebacker at the same position. Eat up blocks. I mean, literally take on offensive tackles and get them out the way. Again, he's very raw. So basically just think of him as a raw version of Michael Parsons. They can't cover at that well. He's not that agile. But I do honestly trust Quay Walker to cover tight ends and running backs more than any other linebacker on our roster. Maybe except for Jamin Davis if he's able to reach his potential and that would fill in a big hole for us again Quay Walker for the reasons I've already stated could possibly make it to the sixth round but we'll see it's a pretty deep linebacker class and that also adds to why Quay Walker may make it that far and teams may just not want to bank on his athletic traits and work on developing him as a starting linebacker with how raw he is but I wouldn't be surprised with how dominant this Georgia defense has been. I mean, it's been historically dominant. You could put it up there with some of the greatest college football defenses. And with him having such a big role on it, all eyes are on him. I mean, he's going to be under spotlight. The SEC championship, more than likely the college football national championship. And that's probably just going to end up rising the stock higher and higher. But if the draft were today, Quay Walker probably would make it to the sixth round. And again, I'm doing this draft so y'all can watch these guys from here on out for the rest of the college season. If you watch a Georgia game, pay attention to Quay Walker because he's out there making plays in both coverage and in run stopping. And he can rush the passer off the edge. A lot of potential, but he also needs a lot of work. And then round seven, pick 231st overall, our last pick of the draft of us taking cornerback Isaac Taylor Stewart. And to me, he's basically a raw and very injury rich history Jalen Ramsey. I mean, if we're talking about size, if we're talking about athletic traits, with him being an inch taller than Jalen Ramsey and running almost the exact same 40 time as him, he's an athletic freak. And the reason I see him making it to round seven, because again, he's raw, but most importantly, he's had two big injuries so far in his career, both 2019 and 2020. When he's on the field, when he's healthy, he flashes like crazy. At his best, he looks like one of the best corners in this draft class. But again, you're going to be banking on him staying healthy. And again, he's also very raw, but he is an athletic freak that you can groom. His athleticism bails him out. He still doesn't have a lot of technique refinement at all. Again, he's very raw. He's not the most instinctual guy. He doesn't have the best coverage intelligence right now at all. But again, his athleticism makes up for it. That's just how much of a freak athlete he is. And I can definitely work with that. And as far as the state of affairs of the Washington football team, 
Benjamin St. Juice is a great long-term answer at corner. And depending on how William Jackson plays for the rest of these next couple of years, he may or may not be our long-term answer at corner. But either way, with how things have gone, we need a shutdown corner added to this group. Because who knows what's going on with Kendall Fuller. Torrey McTire, I like him, but he's out for season already. And even then, you don't want him being your starting cornerback. So I trust Benjamin St. Juice. William Jackson makes great plays and makes bad plays all in the same game so he's just got to be better and more consistent either way if you can get a potential shutdown corner in the seventh round to add to this group that makes me far more comfortable with our secondary especially if you've already added daxton hill in the second round and then you're able to get isaac taylor stewart in the seventh that does a complete 180 on our secondary because at the very least we'll have one of the most athletic secondaries in the nfl even if the communication is still not there, even if we're still making mental mistakes, at least you have guys that can make up for it with their freakish athleticism. And if you have a Daxton Hill over top, you can afford for your corners to make mistakes. Because again, Daxton Hill is going to be one of the rangiest free safeties to come out of a draft in a while. Again, I'm not saying he's Kyle Hamilton at all, because Kyle Hamilton can literally just about do anything in the secondary. I mean, there's debates about whether Kyle Hamilton, Derwin James, Jamal Adams, Mika Fitzpatrick, who's the best safety to come out of the draft in the past few years. But if we're just talking about pure range free safety, Daxton Hill is about as good as it gets for, the, for exactly what this team needs to bail out Benjamin St. Juice, William Jackson, Kendall Fuller, and potentially Isaac Taylor Stewart on the back end. I mean, you can just put him back there, single high free safety, and just let him work. But yeah, man, that's the end of this mock draft. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about all of these picks that I gave us. Do you agree with the players? And do you also agree with the reasoning for the players? Definitely let me know if you plan on checking out some of these guys for the remainder of this college football season because I definitely will be. I'm going to be watching these guys play live when I can catch them because I'm really interested in seeing how they would look on our team and how they would help our defense or offense and even special teams. So definitely get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this mock draft and the players selected. Also, put me on to some players. If you have some sleepers, let me know. I know that Nate Cox guy, the 6'9 quarterback, I've been peeping him. And y'all know I'm a big Matt Corral fan. So outside of those guys, or do you have any sleepers, any other position groups, maybe even quarterback that you're interested in? Definitely get in the comment section and let me know all of that. And as always, man, I appreciate all of the support. Please like this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. And as always, I appreciate everybody that donates to the channel, man, big time. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Man, I really appreciate all of y'all for real. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.